and welcome back to Kingdom Reviews. I'm your host, Future Key Bearer. Before we start our look at the next game in the series, I thought it would be fun to take a look at some fun facts about the development of the first game. To start us off, a common misconception that I've heard is that someone at Square Enix came up with the concept of the game and asked Disney for permission. Actually, the project started off with Disney wanting to team up with Square Enix, then known as Squaresoft, on a new game. However, not much was known about what this game would be like, only that Disney wanted Donald Duck to be the main protagonist, while Square wanted Mickey Mouse. It wasn't until a fateful elevator ride where a longtime Final Fantasy character designer, Tetsuya Nomura, pitched the idea to Disney about having the game star an original character. A pitch made possible by the fact that Square and Disney Japan shared the same office building at the time. And thus, Sora was born, and Nomura was chosen to direct the project. I don't think there was a direct cause and effect thing there, but still. Sora's original design was that of a half-lion, half-human hybrid, wielding a sort of chainsaw sword. Disney didn't like the weapon, as it was too... I don't know... Texas Chainsaw Massacre-y? Although, no reason is known as to why they dropped the half-lion thing. Maybe they didn't want people to think that Sora's mom was into bestiality or something. Because no Disney property has ever suggested that! Although, an interesting note about Sora's final design is that his outfit is based off Mickey, with white gloves, red shorts, big yellow shoes, and something most people don't seem to notice, a black torso. Anyway, Donald and Goofy also had very different designs originally. Well, okay, they still look like themselves, but their costumes were very different. Donald's outfit is more reminiscent of a classic Final Fantasy mage, while Goofy wore armor akin to a European knight, even wielding a sword in addition to a shield. Personally, I kind of like this outfit for Donald better than what we got, but I prefer Goofy's final outfits over this one. But enough about character concepts, let's talk about the story. Originally, the story for this game was going to be a lot simpler than it is. The original concept for the story was going to be more... Disney-esque, so to speak. In fact, apparently Chernabog was going to be the final boss of the game, including a sequence where you would actually scale Bald Mountain. DUDE, THAT WOULD BE AWESOME! And I gladly accept him over Maleficent than Ansem! However, producers told Nomura that the game wouldn't do well if they didn't go for a story that was more on the level of the Final Fantasy games. Whether or not they were right in that assumption is hard to say. I definitely know a few fans who do wish that the story was a lot simpler. But I feel this game had a nice balance. In one of the early concepts of the story, Ariel was going to be one of the Princesses of Heart. However, they couldn't have her be abducted from her world without going against the story they wanted to tell in Atlantica. So they switched her out for Alice which caused reactions that ranged from confusion to mild indifference, seeing as how Alice is in no way a princess. She's not even like Mulan, who despite having no such title in the movie, is still part of the Disney princess lineup. A lot of Disney worlds were conceived and cut from the game, one more notable one being a world based off the Jungle Book. It was eventually cut due to the fact that they were planning on having Tarzan in the game, and they didn't want two Jungle Worlds in the same game. And, to be fair, when you're making an action game, which movie would you rather have? The one where the mid-film action sequence looks like this? Or like this? Another notable world cut from the game was one based off The Lion King. It was cut due to the fact that the developers couldn't get Sora and Goofy's animal character models to work right in gameplay something they evidently figured out for the sequel, but we're getting way ahead of ourselves. But they wanted some Lion King in there, so they decided to have Simba be a summon. Speaking of which, did you notice that all the summons in this game are of Disney characters? I know that seems kind of obvious, but I asked because this wasn't always going to be the case. There was originally going to be one Final Fantasy summon, arguably the most famous, Bahamut. As for why it was cut, well... Legend tells that Bahamut was so great that the PS2 couldn't handle his awesomeness in real time. Or something along those lines. Although, through the use of cheat codes on the PS2 version, you can actually get Bahamut's name to appear on the summon list. Don't try to select it, however, as the game will try to call data that isn't there. And unfortunately, it won't summon missing no and massively multiply an item in your inventory, it'll just crash the game. Something else you can access in the PS2 version via cheat codes is the Crumbling Island area. This was going to be the setting of one more fight against Riku before the final battle with Ansem. And while I'm glad that we don't have to do another Riku fight, I find myself wondering, why wasn't Sora's solo fight with Ansem set here? What do you say we finish off this video with some quick easter eggs? 
the fountain in the third district of Traverse Town depicts Lady and the Tramp. Sora's victory poses in Olympus Coliseum are based off the victory poses of Cloud in Final Fantasy VII and Leon and Zell from Final Fantasy VIII. In Deep Jungle, they actually added the detail of a teapot and teacups resembling Mrs. Potts and Chip, an easter egg that was in the original Tarzan movie. In Ariel's Grotto, there's a music box that actually plays the track Who Am I from Final Fantasy VII. It's kind of hard to tell because Under the Sea still plays over it, but it's there. And with that, we finally finish our journey through the first Kingdom Hearts. Tune in next time as we begin our look at Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories.